All right, good afternoon, traders. It is Monday, October 9th, 2023. Let's get into the market, see what happened today. A lot of stuff uh, internationally happening over the weekends. Uh, how would the markets react? Let's take a look and let's jump into it right now. So take a look and see what the markets did. And despite a little bit of a, a dip at first this morning, and I let all the members know, hey, I think any dip today is going to rally. And we definitely did. Uh, on the session with the uh, S&P uh, moving up about 27 points on the session, closing pretty close to the session highs uh, overall. Let's take a look at what uh, that did in the overall markets here. On the SPY, on the weekly here, it looks like uh, we got a little bit of a curl here. Now, it's the beginning of the week, so let's see what happens. I'm not getting too excited about one day of a week. So we need a full week of a rebound or a change in the direction on uh, the MACD and the RSI is heading lower. However, it's a good start uh, for the week when you're up uh, decently. So it looks good. However, we're still in a downtrend. There's nothing that's changed that. Just because MACD RSI may not have continued to go down today, does not mean it's an all clear for a big old rally uh, moving to new highs. So uh, based upon that, we're going to remain cautious here. But any bounce to me would still be an opportunity to get short and uh, continue some selling uh, here. If we look at the daily chart, we continue our piece, uh, bullish PSR reversal here. Moving up, we closed all the way up at the 21 EMA, which still is below the 50 EMA. So a nice bounce off the 200 uh, MA back here on Friday. That was a good sign. MACD has been moving up. RSI is moving up. Uh, so all of those things are good on a daily perspective. No reason to think uh, that uh, it's nothing more than a bit of a bounce here. We'll see what happens now. If we can get uh, back above maybe the 50 and we come close to this uh, up uh, downtrend line at the top of the channel here, then there'll be really decision time to see do we continue to rally through or is it just another rally and just another lower high off the lower low in the markets. We'll see what happens, but a good constructive day uh, on the in the market on SPY. Uh, Q's. Not quite as great of a day as uh, as SPX had, but pretty similar in uh, most respects here. Bouncing, moving higher on the session. It had, Now the Qs have moved ahead of their 50 moving average. That's a good sign. Above the 21 uh, still for the second straight session. Those are all good things. MACD, positive cross and moving higher. RSI above 50, moving higher. RSI moving higher on the weekly and MACD continuing to improve on the weekly as well. So I like the way technology looks here. So get some good, uh, some good momentum on technologies. Uh, and then if we look at the IWM here, we did bounce MACD and RSI are improving uh, the weekly though, still in a downtrend uh, pretty significantly below all the major moving averages, nothing real positive on the IWM for the Russell. If we take a look at the number of uh, uh, stocks that are below, or I should say above, uh, their 50-day moving average uh, here, uh, we moved off of uh, you know some recent lows back up to about 23%. So we got as low as 7% uh, back here last week. So that was a pretty extreme low. Uh, that's one of the lowest that we have seen. Uh, dating back to what October, you know, September, October of last year, and then June of last year as well. So very extremely uh, oversold reading on the 50-day uh, moving average. If we look at the put call ratio, uh, it was pretty over, uh, pretty overextended to the put side. Here has come off of it a bit, but uh, nothing right now. Just in the middle of no man's land. Nothing to. Take away from that. Now, VIX did raise a fraction on the day. So VIX was up uh, a quarter of a point. Nothing major to, to look at here. Still under 18. Uh, if we look at the dollar, dollar was up just fraction. It was up a lot more, but it was up uh, just fractionally on the day. TLT did make a nice little move higher on the day, coming off of oversold territory. 
MACD moving higher, moving higher on the RSI. Hasn't quite uh, made a big turnaround on the weekly yet. So that's really what I'm looking for. Let's see what happens. I think it's good for a flyer here. Uh, I don't think that I'm going to plow all of my resources into TLT right here. But nice to see a little bit of a bounce uh, here from an oversold territory with uh, MACD improving. Now, we saw that back here in August, uh, and that was followed by another drop of about uh, you know 10 points more, almost 12%. Uh, so not going to get ahead of myself yet because this is exactly what had happened back in August on this overextended move, move higher, and then it just tanked and sold off. Is it going to be different this time? I don't know. Not really going to go all in on TLT until we see what happens. Uh, however, uh, we may nibble at selling some naked puts, uh, which is what we did on futures today. And then if we look at the uh, rates, moved up just fractionally on the day. Overall, bond market closed. So we'll see what happens tomorrow when everything's back open. Rates are still in overbought territory. Need to see rates coming down and coming down decently here. That would help the markets overall. So we need the dollar to weaken a fraction. Uh, we need rates to come down a bit. I think there's only three things that are going to help rates. Uh, number one, the only thing that's going to drop rates right now is a failure in the banking industry. Some kind of a credit crisis, failure of a major bank or a couple banks, and I don't know that I see that coming. I think there's some stress on the regional still, uh, but I think you're going to have to see some serious bank casualties to drop rates, number one. Number two, you're going to need to see a market crash. Okay, If rates are going to come down, Feds are going to drop rates. Rates are going to come off. I think you have to see some sort of a serious market crash or a very significant market sell-off. Third thing would be inflation really has to show some meaningful improvement to show that you know inflation is getting under control and we're going to have to see unemployment rise. Uh, so we're going to have to see unemployment rising to show a cooling off of the jobs market. We need to see inflation cooling off. I don't know that we're going to see all of those things anytime soon. Uh, so I think that rates are going to stay elevated here, which would mean to me that TLT uh, and bonds should stay uh, at a pretty subpar level for now. Might be able to start to nibble. I'm not getting long big time just yet. If we take a look at the futures, uh, Canadian, uh, Canadian dollar had a nice gainer day today, despite the dollar moving up just a fraction. Uh, Canadian dollar, nice day today. Uh, on the uh, this is euro, so I got uh, a few things. So on the euro, uh, it was off fractionally today. MACD continues to improve. RSI trying to come off of those lows, couldn't break above the 50 uh, mark. However, the weekly looks to be putting in some decent bottoming rounding action. We'll see if that continues. Uh, it's the beginning of the week. We got a long week to go. If we look at the Aussie dollar up fractionally on the session and the British pound also up fractionally on the session. Oil, big winner on the day, big gap up. A lot of nervousness with what's going on in the Middle East right now between Israel and Hamas and seeing whether Iran becomes involved and embroiled in this conflict. Not that they're not already involved as the backers of Hamas. However, uh, if Iran starts to get involved and starts to uh, create some problems in the Straits of Hormuz there. We'll see what happens with oil. I think today is a just a reaction day. Oil rose on the session, rose solidly on the session, no doubt about that, 4% uh, increase in oil. But oil had been trending down towards over, you know, oversold on the daily chart. So I don't think, I think the move down was definitely overdone. Uh, I think it is still weak. I think we could still see some lower uh, prices on oil overall, but I think this conflict is going to keep things elevated for a bit right now. Inventories, extraordinarily low. I mean, we have rated our entire strategic petroleum reserve. I think there's a day's countdown now of how much oil is left uh, in that if we don't fill it up soon. Uh, so we've got some issues uh, right now in oil that should probably keep prices propped up. We did take some uh, trades on an oil. I have a 112 trade and a naked put in oil that we put on today. Uh, both excited to see uh, where those two head 
uh, on the session. But good day in oil, uh, popping up there, uh, back above its 50-day moving average. Didn't make it to the 21, uh, almost got there, backed way off uh, a bit on it. So overall, good on oil. Let's see what happens. Is it an overreaction move higher on oil? And do we get a little bit more of a calm down tomorrow? Uh, maybe see a pullback a point uh, or two. I don't know that it's going to retrace all three points, but I would certainly expect oil to maybe show a little weakness tomorrow, but we'll see. Maybe get some follow through to the upside, which would be great for our 112 and our naked puts. We're good either way. And if we take a look at, at gold in here, uh, gold had a decent little reversal day off of this huge hammer on the weekly last week uh, on gold. So a really good bullish sign uh, there. I'm not going to say anything about MACD and RSI in the weekly because uh, one day doesn't make a whole week. we got to see how the rest of this week really plays out. But when we're looking at gold uh, here on the daily, and MACD has been piling up, uh, moving up for three straight sessions now. RSI moving higher all the way up to 41 from about a 15 level uh, in just about two sessions. So massive move up in gold well off of the 1820-ish level, all the way back to about 1880, 1875. Really good movement on gold. Great for our portfolio today. And I even sold a naked put uh, in gold futures as well. So I like what I see in gold. I like the bottoming action here. I don't need to get all there in one day. I like to uh, have some calm up and down sideways movement here in gold. Uh, I'm hoping to see 18, 20, 1800. Hopefully that level holds. I think that's what we're uh, planning on uh, for right now. If anything changes, we'll certainly post that out. Uh, I did take a look at uh, our lean hogs today. It was down a bit on the session. Totally fine. Actually, we uh, made some gains on the day and we are very close to closing out another strangle winner, 50% winner on uh, lean hogs. And then if we take a look at, we're going to skip through uh, cattle. We're going to go right to copper. If we look at copper, uh, I like the way copper is coming off of these lows uh, that it put in uh, last week and a big turnaround on Friday. Uh, some more improvement on MACD and RSI rising today. Uh, trying to get a 112 trade on in copper right here. So we're waiting to get filled. Uh, we got filled on the naked put part of it. It's all good. I'm waiting to get filled on the put debit spread piece and we'll have a 112 on copper. So like where uh, like where that is uh, right now, if we take a look at the major sectors that are out there, the big winner on the day, obviously the oil and gas sector um, that moved up over 4% today with oil price of oil. You would, you would naturally think energy is going to move up with that. So uh, energy with about a 3%, uh, a little over 3% move today. Industrials moved up on the session today. Uh, real estate fractionally higher uh, on a day, a little over 1% higher on uh, real estate. Uh, communications, the XLC, that's your Meta and your Google. Up today, we added a trade in Meta in the account today. So we've got a, a new Meta trade running. We take a look at utilities up a percent, and then from there, everything else fractionally to uh, fractionally up. Tech up half a percent, uh, healthcare up uh, just a uh, a fraction here today. Uh, biotech or, or sorry, XLB, which is your um, materials. Sorry, uh, so your materials, your XLY, your Amazon, and your Tesla uh, moved up just a hair today, a tenth of a percent. Uh, and then your two losers today, regional banks and, uh, and biotech. So regional banks, biotech, your loser sec uh, sectors today with financials just barely hanging on unchanged. Don't really like the looks still of financials on the weekly, uh, the daily decent looking recovery. We'll see what happens significantly below their 21 and 50 moving averages. Uh, I'm not a big fan of where uh, financials are right now. And if we jump into uh, some of the major uh, Magnificent Seven, if you would, Amazon, decent little update, continues its MACD and RSI improvement. Uh, so that's fantastic to see uh, on Amazon. Apple continuing to move higher, strong RSI, strong MACD movement higher, uh, moving back above its 50 moving average. It's probably one of the strongest looking techs uh, out there. Microsoft doing something very similar. 
uh, as well. So Microsoft looking strong uh, as well. Uh, Meta looking good. We broke out of this uh, wedge uh, pattern that we were in strongly on Friday. I pointed this out uh, to keep an eye on that. We did finally get that breakout on Friday uh, here. We'll look to see if that becomes any kind of support. Uh, I did get into a trade on Meta today. Uh, so we are long a little bit of Meta. Uh, Google also looking decent here, uh, moving up on the session. Uh, NVIDIA taking a hit down over a percent uh, on NVIDIA. This one's not uh, performing quite as well. And then Tesla today dropping on the day as well, but really not a major move on Tesla. And I want to jump to AMD. I've been talking about this for uh, quite a while now, this falling wedge pattern. We broke through it just like Meta. Uh, and uh, this one's off to the races. Uh, so we put an AMD, put credit spread on in the account today. And another one that we looked at, and uh, I talked about was Disney talking about the falling wedge pattern here. It got close to the breakout on Friday, officially broke out to the upside today. So strong MACD, strong RSI, Disney looking good here. Uh, over the weekend, they put out some trade opportunities. So you had a chance to get in on some of these uh, today um, as we look in the market. Let's take a look at what happened in our account uh, today. All right. So here's uh, overall on the account. Finished the day with 554 on our deltas, which is a 0 0.19. 0 0.2 is our maximum that we try to get hit uh, on the up or down. So we are very delta neutral on it right now with a little, obviously, some skew to the positive. Really like where we are sitting on our deltas. Our theta, super strong, 1525.52. Got some uh, volatility back in this market. I think it's a little high. Uh, I'm not going to try to calm it down right now, but a little high on theta, but delta is perfectly in line. So I'm not so worried about high theta right now. Uh, we moved back up 294, 280. Uh, so we're back to uh, really, uh, is that the uh, highs of the month so far? So uh, we are at new month highs and we are just a fraction off of our our all-time highs. So uh, I think, what was it, 300 and something, 304. Uh, so we are sitting $10,000 before or below that. Uh, we've seen this thing move five, $6,000 in a day on this size account. Uh, so we may be a couple of days away from new all-time highs. We'll see where we hit. Uh, BP usage moved up a tad today, 78.57. I no longer have any BIL in this account. Uh, I, I had to move it. Uh, to avoid any potential concerns over buying power. I wanted to keep it within reason. So we did remove the bill. We'll get back into it. Uh, we already got the distribution for the month. So all good. We took in 500 and some bucks. Uh, we'll take that. So BPU is a little high, 78%, a little higher than I want it to be. Another day or two like this, and that should bring it back under control. Uh, we did have daily realized gains, 590 bucks in the account today. So a nice little day in the account, and uh, we're up on the week now, 590. And let's take a look at exactly what that was. Uh, so here's the four trades that we had on today. Uh, this morning, we took off a, a big-ass 112 trade. Uh, this trade uh, we put on for a 50-cent credit, and then we took it off today for a $22.80 credit. So we added to our overall credit. See, not bad when you can put on a trade for a credit and then close it for a credit that is almost 200 times bigger. Uh, we actually uh, technically have a gain of 4,660 on this trade. It's a 43% return on the margin that we used. So I'll stick with the 43%. I don't want to be the YouTube guy saying, hey, I just had a trade in 38 days, make 4,660%. But that's exactly what this trade did. Uh, but a 43% Return on capital, fantastic. Uh, we put on two zero DTE trades today. We started off with a call spread when the markets were heading down. And then as soon as the markets bottomed and I thought we would reverse, I also put on a put credit spread. We closed both for 50% winners during the day. So picked up gains on that. And then we did close our hedge today. So we had a put spread hedge on in ES. Uh, I was gonna take that off if we exceeded a 25% 
uh, loss on it. We hit 30% when I started to try to take it off. Uh, so we closed that one for a little bit of a loss today, but it was a hedge. Not that I won't put another hedge back on, but I like where we're positioned right now with Delta and buying power. I don't feel like I need as much of that hedge uh, in there right now with all of the 112 trades. So we're in a really great position here. IRA hit a new all-time high today. Uh, so we're excited on the IRA account. So we have having some great uh, success in the accounts. We'll see you guys in the markets tomorrow. Good luck trading. Stay safe out there, everybody. Take care and good night. Bye-bye.